Uh, welcome back to Tender Wema channel with your host Badi Badi Munama and Spamanda. Uh, well, today we'll be talking about uh, xenophobia and all the issues surrounding it in uh, South Africa. We know this is an emotional issue and also a controversial issue. So we hope to provide uh, biblical answers to the issue. So we'll get into it. Uh, Spamanda, can you just uh, define for us what xenophobia is? Well, yeah, uh, uh, with xenophobia, it can be defined as um, a prejudice, dislike, and hatred against other people of um, uh, other countries. This can be verbally, or it can be with physical violence, as we've seen with what is happening here in, in South Africa. But it starts, you know, with those uh, statements that people make, and then it results in you know the physical part mm -hmm. where now physical violence is waged against uh, mm -hmm. foreign nationals mm -hmm. yeah so with everything that has been happening uh, in south africa mm -hmm. would you consider south africa as a xenophobic country ah uh, no i uh, wouldn't consider south africa as a xenophobic country because uh most people have made uh this thing that has been happening uh, here in south africa as if it is only happening only here in South Africa as if other nations do not have the very same uh, thing happening in their own nations. So South Africans are not xenophobic. Uh, if you can look here in Soweto for example, we have many Zambians, uh, Mozambicans, Zimbabweans and even other nations that uh, Malawians uh, I grew up around a place where we have many Malawian uh, brothers and uh, they are living peacefully uh, they are marrying uh, South African women, uh, some are even giving their uh, own women to South African men, uh, some are having children here, so they are just living uh, peacefully, you know, we've, we've been here, I think here in Soweto, except for the uh, looting of shops and, and all that, we've been had such thing where you will find Sowetans going around and uh, beating, banning, you know, Mozambicans and all that. So, and also other places in Eastern Cape, uh, 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 for example, when this thing was uh, um, very boiling here in Jobek, uh, back in Eastern Cape, Nigerians and Somalians and all other guys, like they were just okay, their shops were operating very well. And also uh, in the sites of Krugerstrop, I think Kachiso or Sasangwede, when we went there, I was shocked to find those shops in operation, you know, people were fine. So it only, that thing only happened there in Jobek, and it was only a few people who did it. But also, uh, uh, with that, we cannot just take those few people who are doing that and then demonize the whole nation as if like it is xenophobic, you know. So we really have to put on uh, um, classes so that we can uh, look this thing uh, 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 carefully. In, in, uh, in Congo, uh, Congo and Rwanda, the very same thing is happening. You know, you have these two guys, two uh, ethnic groups hating each other. Mm -hmm. You know, in Nigeria, you have the, uh, the Yorubas, the Igbos and the Fulao, uh, you know, uh, who are in continuous conflict, mm -hmm. you see. So people who say that South Africa is xenophobic, they want to take this thing as if it is only uh, uh, happening here in South Africa. So our nation is not xenophobic. In fact, South African love, you know, um, uh, our foreign brothers. Uh, we embrace their music, um, uh, culture, food, you know, and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, you even have many of the Nigerian brothers taking uh, 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 South African women mm -hmm. without us having a problem with that. So our nation is not xenophobic. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so uh, we've dis defined uh, the term xenophobia and Spamanda has also uh, described that what's happening in South Africa is not uh, xenophobic in any way. So uh, at this moment, uh, Spamanda, just explain to us then, if this are not xenophobic attacks or xenophobia, what's happening? What it, what, how can you describe what's happening in South Africa? Yeah, uh, I think... Uh, <clears throat> One thing for sure uh, that we have to uh, acknowledge is that um, in, in, in uh, with South African, I'm not saying that this is right, mm -hmm. and but it's happening in South Africa. 
when one is caught uh, doing crime, there's this thing that we call uh, mob justice. Uh, I think you, you know it where the criminal will be caught, yes, yes. beaten or banned. They don't care whether that criminal is a South African or what. Yes. But if he's caught, he will be beaten and banned. So I think with the current attacks that have been happening here in uh, South Africa, I'll say it's just uh, a mindless hatred that others have took uh, and uh, use it to fulfill, you know, their um, uh, <coughs> desire, you know, to steal uh, things from people. Mm. Because if at the heart of the attacks that were happening here in South Africa, uh, when people were asked what was in fact happening, you know, you will hear people saying that we are tired of drugs. Mm. You see? We're tired of drugs, we're tired of having our children being taken um, uh, as prostitutes. Uh, we are tired of um, uh, having uh, people who have come into this country illegally, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, at the heart of uh, 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 these attacks was that, that, you know, we now find our jobs being taken, you know, and then it's taken by people who are coming to the country illegally. So at the heart of this, it was not like, you know what, uh, these uh, Zimbabweans, these are Nigerians, we hate them, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, in fact, we no longer want them. And I was on Twitter, like when uh, uh, you see articles that have been posted regarding this, you will hear the cry in, uh, among South Africans that in fact, we are not saying that the good Nigerians should go. Mm. You, you will hear people saying that the good Nigerians should stay. In fact, the ones we're having problem with are those who are in fact into these illegal dealings here uh, uh, in South Africa. And in fact, it's a fact that cannot be denied that if you can go to Jobek, most of the brothels there in Jobek uh, uh, where the, and also uh, the buildings where uh, you find prostitutions and all that are mm -hmm. owned. Uh, if you can also go to uh, Rosatenville, they are owned by Nigerians. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a fact. And then also, uh, you know, at the at the heart of these attacks was that you know uh, that we are fighting crime. And then there were those few people within those who were saying that they are fighting crimes who took that as an opportunity to uh, do criminal acts you know, hiding it under what was in fact happening. But now this escalated to the to the extent where even now those who are good, who are here legally, who are making a decent living, got trapped inside all of this thing, all of this mess. Mm. And that's where uh, uh, the painful thing is, mm. you see. But yeah, no, I, I will say that in fact, uh, at uh, these people were just motivated by, you know, a hatred, a dislike, of uh, foreign nationals that was not at uh, the heart of that mm -hmm. and we could we could see you know we are a proof of that here in in, in Soweto, zimbabweans are, and mozambicans malawians all of them they are living peacefully even now they have their own homes they have children here uh they are living peaceful no one is attacking them mm. you see so now you have to ask yourself in terms of that that okay if this thing was happening in that way in job why is it not in fact uh, happening in that way here in Soweto, mm -hmm. you see. Mm -hmm. So you could see uh, uh, this was in fact uh, a different thing. So yeah, I wouldn't say it was um, uh, 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 xenophobia, you know, uh, 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 that motivated uh, all of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and w with all that you have spoken, you know, we can uh, put our minds to this and try mm -hmm. to come up with solutions and uh, South Africans, but uh, what concerns us as Christians is what does God say about this? Yeah. Uh, what, what are the biblical solutions that we can uh, uh, use uh, and you know address this uh, situation? Yeah, I, I think uh, two things we have to note from the Bible. First of all, uh, Leviticus 19.33 and uh, Ex Exodus 12.49. Uh, uh, the first one talks about um, the foreigner who lives among you, do him no harm. And then the second one talks about, uh, which is Exodus 12 foot 9, talks about that the same law shall apply to both the native and the uh, sojourner, you know, the, the, the foreigner and all that. 
So uh, I think those are the key solutions. First of all, uh, God is speaking to Israel. They were form formerly, you know, a nation taken into Egypt and mm -hmm. foreigners there. So now, bringing them uh, into the land, he now tells them how they ought to treat other people who are foreigners to Israel. And he, he commands them to show these people love. You know, you have to show the people love. Mm -hmm. But if, in the context of doing that, mm -hmm. also you have to make sure that the law is maintained. You can't say that, you know what, there's a different law to the native than there is a law to the foreigners. But we know that we're living in a country where God's law, God's word is mm -hmm. rejected all the time. Mm -hmm. So that's why you find uh, these troubles. Mm -hmm. But now, we have to first show them love because some of these people are coming from countries where they are struggling uh, economically. There are political turmoils. Some of them are running away from wars. You know, uh, some of them like... Uh, really trying to find uh, uh, ways to which their uh, families will eat. So we have to take those into consideration and make sure that when they come, we look after the people, we love them, we give them shelter. And then also, with in doing that, making sure that uh, if you know any of them transgress the law of the land, he has to be punished. Mm. You see, so that's how we ought to look at it uh, in uh, the perspective of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in light of all that you have said, Amanda, uh, you know that South Africa is not a Christian country. Mm. We have uh, different people believing in um, uh, different things and people, not all people accept uh, what the Bible teaches. Mm. So as a country, as a people, how do we move forward? Yeah, uh, it would be difficult, uh, first of all, because we are not a Christian country, I uh, mean, we are rejecting God's revelation and there are consequences, you know, in doing that because of, in, because we have the problem of evil and the problem of evil cannot be solved by any man, you know, uh, or whether we can have an intelligent man or what, this problem can't be solved by any man. So I think uh, what we can now do is in fact, um, you know, uh, bringing convictions to people, you know, uh, because I think now we're living in a time where people are slowly, slowly killing their conscience. You know, if, uh, for example, you are killing uh, a man who has a child just mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you say this person is taking my job, mm -hmm. you know, so. what goes into your heart, you see. So in light of that, I think the church has a huge role to play in this. First of all, in proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ in, mm -hmm. in, 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 in the community. Because it is, that's the only solution yes. to this problem. Uh, if you can look in the church, you know, we have uh, different ethnic groups. But uh, even though it happened in Rwanda, where other Christians were, in fact, um, advocating for the killing of their own brothers and also during slave trade, during the slave trade where mm. uh, other uh, people who claim to be Christians um, were in fact uh, supporting a system that uh, dehumanize their fellow uh, uh, brothers. So I think now uh, what ought to be done is that uh, everyone has to go back to the word, believe us, and then uh, 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 take the gospel out, proclaim it to the people. Because if people feel like that they are offended, you know, Christ is, is God is the one who's ha who has been offended the most. So if we look at God in uh, that we are the ones who have offended him the most, yet he sent Christ to come and die for us, you know, not only that he rose from the grave, then we'll understand, you know, how uh, that can in fact move us to act in a different way to other men. You see. So the gospel is a lot, uh, uh, um, it's, in fact, it's the only solution to this. Secondly now, on a practical uh, <laughs> uh, note, is that we can pressure the government you know, uh, to uh, uh, exercise, uh, in fact, to punish those who are looting shops you know, and also report such people who are doing those things. Uh, and then we can also try to, uh, I think one of the most important things, these intertribal marriages, I think they are also one of the best way 
where we go out, you know, one has to move from his own comfort, his own tribe, you know, to can go and marry from another tribe, you know, and uh, I think that is also one of the solutions. It has worked in the past, that's why you will find tribes uh, in the past not wanting uh, their own men or women to marry from other tribes because they knew that when that happens and then a child is born, there's a sacrifice, there's a compromise that has to be done, you see. So I think uh, if we can try also to speed up uh, that, you know, and encourage it uh, even more, I think it will bring uh, certain solutions to this uh, xenophobic attack. But all of this, all of these efforts are useless if, you know, uh, uh, the gospel is not um, uh, embraced because in the end, you know, we can try to make these little compromises and all that, you know, trying to fix ways as best as we can, but uh, they will not last if they are not rooted in the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, brother. As you've heard it from Spa, the solution is Christ, and Christ is the centerpiece. Once the centerpiece is put in place, then all the other pieces will fall in place. That is all from, uh, for, from us today. Until we meet next time, stay tuned and stay blessed. Amen. <laughs>